I really wanted this to be better. It's fine. It's just. So I recently finished a digital arc of the Bedlam Stacks, which was very graciously granted to me via NetGalley by Bloomsbury, and this is going to be the upcoming release from author Natasha Pulley. Now, I previously encountered Natasha Pulley through her debut, The Watchmaker of Filigree Street, which turned to me to be this very like surprising and refreshing and just wonderful little mystery story that was set in London. Granted, I went into that novel with no expectations and I came out really just so pleasantly surprised. So when the Bedlam Stacks popped up and I was uh, again granted access to the digital arc, I was really quite excited. I thought I was going to have that sort of same relatively pleasant experience and just enjoy the book that I read. Maybe that wasn't fair to expect that same kind of like charm that I got in Watchmaker because uh, it, it never really came in the Bedlam Stacks. Now don't get me wrong, there are plenty of good things about the Bedlam Stacks. Polly's ability to spin a tale of magical realism is never in question in this novel, and there's more than one hint of Conrad's classic heart of darkness about the whole thing. And yet the story feels overdrawn and overlong, despite clocking in at under 350 pages. And it just makes the whole thing rather one note. Things will reach a certain emotional pitch, but then never really diverge from there. It just sort of kind of hangs in stasis. I suppose one could argue that's part of the atmosphere of the novel, but it did little to invest me as a reader in what was happening to our protagonist, Merrick Tremaine. And with novels, that's really not great if you can't invest me in your main character when I think that your atmosphere, which started great, is starting to go a little stale before I'm even halfway through. And despite some interesting moments of mysticism and religion that tie into that aforementioned magical realism, the Bedlam Stacks ultimately leads to very little. Everything just sort of ends. It fizzles out in such a way that I couldn't help but think of the line from Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. This book ultimately just sort of becomes its own villain, as I think it really needed something more to kind of punch up the ending, or at least make sure that the threads that were spinning and being spun earlier on actually led to something. Just something. Books can have very open endings, but still feel like they've reached a conclusion. Like, good, we've concluded. We're sequel baiting, but we're, we've concluded. This film just sort of... I can't even come up with words. I'm making hand motions. Like this is how little this book left me with at the end. And it was such a disappointment with how much I had loved The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and gotten something that I didn't expect out of that book. Maybe this is a fault of my own going into this book with some certain amount of expectations, but I didn't need a repeat of Watchmaker, but I at least wanted some more substance out of this novel. I'm sure there are plenty of people who are gonna love this book. I was just kind of underwhelmed by it when I reached its conclusion. I expected a lot more out of this book, especially with the way that it starts and it sows the seeds for some really interesting things that just never really come to fruition. This book will release on August 1st. If you're at all interested, you can check it out when it releases. Um, if you have not read Natasha Foley before, I do highly recommend her book, The Watchmaker of Filigree Street. It released about a year or two ago, and it was a really delightful little mystery story that was set in, I believe, like the 1800s London. And while I was certainly disappointed by the Bedlam Stacks, I'm still gonna keep an eye out for Natasha Foley. I still remember what I really liked about Watchmaker, and there were things in Bedlam that were interesting, they just didn't really go anywhere. So maybe with her next release, I'll enjoy that a bit more. Thanks for watching me ramble today. If you'd like to see more from me, go ahead and click that button with my face on it. It'll take you to my channel where I ramble about a whole lot of different things. Got some thoughts of your own? Go ahead and leave them down in the comments. And make sure that if you want to see more ramblings from me, you click that little subscribe button. That's it for me today, you guys. So until next time, cheers.